from the nation's capital. Welcome back to Your Source TV. With us is Dr. Michael Vermel. He's an optometrist who's using some very unique and advanced approaches to vision care. And we've been talking about a, a new technique uh, for uh, cornea reshaping. It's called gentle molding. And Dr. Vermel, if you could just give a few more specifics about um, how it is for a patient, what they have to do for how long, and and maybe the differences in cost between cutting techniques of Lasix versus this non-surgical uh, technique. Sure. The the if I was to put this talk about gentle molding or the can in a nutshell to a patient or a parent, basically it's a non-surgical, non-permanent way of changing your eyesight so you can eliminate need for glasses or drastically reduce it. There are, some, there are some advantages over LASIK. Uh, it is non-permanent, so therefore um, you can change the prescription. There's no scarring. Uh, it's the same sort of risk as you would wear if you wear contact lenses. Um, basically, there are some real advantages, too. There, it, it has a drastic effect on slowing or stopping someone's eyes from getting worse for nearsightedness, and they've actually finally proven this in a number of studies. That's pretty phenomenal. Uh, a lot LASIX of LASIX does not. LASIX does nothing to stop your eyes from getting worse. It, wow. In fact, it keeps getting worse at the same rate. Uh, it does nothing to stop the eyes from getting worse. Molding, if you stop wearing it, your eyes will go back to that prescription, but it won't get worse. Or if it does, not not as much as it would have. How long has this been available, and why isn't this knowledge more widespread or more optometrists offering it? Well, versus LASIX. Well, the evolution of ortho-K, which gentle molding is also known as, as ortho-K, has been very interesting. Basically, the front of the eye is called the cornea. And the cornea um, is the main focusing mechanism for the eye. There are other focusing mechanisms, but that's the main one. And what really... <coughs> point determine, to the focal... To the back of the eye. So basically, what, um, when someone has a prescription, it's the distance and the focus that's actually on the retina from the cornea. There's some things in between called the lens, which helps your focusing for up close. But basically, uh, your cornea is one of the biggest factors in how you focus. That's where LASIK occurs. They actually uh, do laser on that part of the eye and actually thin your cornea. Quite frankly, it makes it a little bit weaker. But LASIK has some good points to it also, which we can discuss at another time. But, but what molding does, it reshapes the front of the eye like a laser. Do you wear it every night? Well, it depends. We have some patients who have a prescription, which you might think is high. Uh, minus two is when someone has a difficulty. It's a minus two sphere. That means someone's a certain amount of nearsightedness, and some of you out there may know what a minus two is uh, when you look in your kind of lens boxes. But some of those people cannot even read the big E. Well, we have about a minus two change on average the first day. The most has been what I call a minus five. A minus five can't see much past this from your face in one day. Pretty phenomenal. Now, the first night, that may weigh off, wear off a little bit in a minus two, but within an average of two or three nights, that's holding all day. Is it uncomfortable to wear them? No, they have a, they're phenomenally comfortable. And one of the reasons is because when you wear them at night, they sit in this mold. And after you wear them a few times, they actually sit in that mold. And some people claim they, they sleep better. It's kind of, maybe it's a, like a Pavlov dog. They, uh, they know they have to sleep when the lens is in. But no, they're very comfortable. We do some extremely high prescriptions. And um, we have some people actually doing the molding on purpose because of this preventive effect of your eyes becoming longer. There are some problems with your eyes becoming longer. One is if it becomes too long, you can have so much stress, you, stress on your eye and so much stretching, you can actually have holes or tears. It does increase the risk It's beyond of, astigmatism, this elongating. Well, what happens when your eyes become longer, become more nearsighted. And we have had a, a number of patients being concerned about the eyes becoming so long, they can have hemorrhages in the back of the eye or holes and tears, and they've done the molding specifically to keep their eyes from becoming longer. Why wouldn't it be more popular if it doesn't involve surgery, and can it get the same results or better? Um, or is it more specific to the patient? It, well, it's um, better is an interesting word. I think better. Uh, LASIK has improved a lot over the years. Um, they have uh, different techniques for different lasers, different ways of um, of refractive surgery. One is LASIK, and they use a flap, and they have another way of making that flap now, which is a lot better. The molding, we, we, most of the patients in our office, we talk about both, the LASIK and the molding. Would you try the molding first? I mean, it's a... 
Yes, I, I'd have to say that we're rather unique. <clears throat> when patients have the choice, uh, and we are quite trained in, we have a lot of experience in, in the molding, I'd say 98%, and I'm sure my uh, fellow colleagues who are involved with laser don't, would, would uh, um, it, it's something that is not as well known as the laser, I agree. Um, we do about 98% molding versus laser when people know the two options. And what specifically do you do? You know, you put in contacts at night for how long, and how long does it take what to get they a benefit? Are, the, the molding is where you actually reshape the front eye, just like laser. In fact, uh, if you take a map of the eye, <clears throat> which after LASIK and after molding, look, it looked almost identical. I mean, it's amazing. It does the same thing that the laser does without surgery. So what you do, uh, for instance, depending on, with nearsightedness, the cornea is actually too curved. So we push Nearsighted, you can see near. Exactly, right. And so, that, or called myopia. Mm -hmm. So in myopia or nearsightedness, we actually push on the front of the eye with a, uh, a very custom-made lens. They make a long story. Because a person cannot see far away. They can't see near, so you're helping shape the, right. the cornea. In, in myopia or nearsightedness, <clears throat> light focuses in front of the back of the retina. And you can help that by, like LASIK does, making the front of the eye flatter. Okay, so it pushes light back further. And so you put in a contact-like device. Is it specially formed for each person, and how long do you have to wear this? Well, I'll give, you might have to give a little history on this. Uh, the, the molding years ago was very uh, archaic. We actually just pushed in the eye, and the corny went everywhere. Uh, back then, we only had uh, a, a, something called a keratometer. It only measures three points of the eye. Nowadays, um, we have a very sophisticated computer called a corneal topographer, and this measures 8,000 or more points of the eye. This has enabled us with sophistic sophisticated computer lays to actually customize a fit for this eye with 8,000 points that we can watch as we fit it with these special lenses. And so this contact that's been specially prepared, you put it in at night, you just wear it at night for how long, and does your eye then need booster sessions? Uh, basically, uh, the way I describe it to our patients, like braces on your teeth. And mo it has remarkable results. Um, it's, it's, uh, we do it for nearsightedness. Uh, we do off-label uh, off for hyperopia or farsightedness. It, uh, we also do it for astigmatism. We also do it for bifocals. It's actually a phenomenal effect for reading. It's, what it's if you have a couple conditions? You know, need bifocals, can see up close but not far away and might have a little astigmatism. With well, those 8,000 points of data, does that? Oh, yeah. We had a patient today that uh, we're correct. And she, uh, she has four in her family, including herself, are doing the molding. And, and uh, she has all of them. <laughs> uh, Nearsightedness, astigmatism, and presbyopia, which is unable to read too well. So, you know, what... This is remarkable. <clears throat> Well, it is remarkable. And what's even better about it, it's actually been proven. This molding technique actually slows down the eyes getting worse. It's the only proven way to actually stop or slow the eyes from getting worse, particularly in children.